Hi everybody and welcome back to the channel. Since the last video I've gotten a new microphone and camera so let me know if that seems a little bit better. This time I'm going to be doing a whole bunch of small projects instead of one big one. I'll be working on a table, a set of floating shelves, and some other mini projects. I'll add timestamps to all the projects below, but the first thing that I'll be working on is using this board to make a long skinny table to put behind my new couch in my new apartment. I'll start out by trimming the board to length. I want it to match the width of the couch so that way it doesn't stick out on either side. Even though the blade on this saw is meant for metal, it actually does a pretty decent job with wood, although it does tend to burn a little bit. I already know that one edge of this board is actually pretty good, and since this doesn't really have to be perfect, I just snapped a chalk line down the side, measuring to make sure that it's about parallel. I'll just use a plane to shave down to that line, that'll be more than good enough for my purposes. I didn't have time to do this at the time, but my plan is to use these small unistruts and basically have shelves underneath the table that ride on the unistruts like runners, so that way I can slide the shelf out and have storage underneath my table behind the couch. That'll have to be a long-term plan though. In the meantime, if I actually want to trim the other side of this board down to be parallel, I need to sharpen up my plane. This blade is terrible right now and barely cuts anything. I got a set of diamond sharpening stones, though this will be a perfect project to try out. I've got a 600, 800, and 1200, I believe. I spent a lot of time on the 600 grit stone, making sure it was flat and that all the major chips and everything were totally worked out. I didn't want to get higher up the grits and then realize that I had to restart to get one more chip out. I finished with my leather strop with some polishing compound. This always seems like it makes a big difference and makes the blade a lot sharper. With that done, I moved on and started reassembling my flame blade. Finally ready to go and shave down the other side of my cherry board. I made some test passes on a scrap of mystery wood and it seemed to work just fine, so I guess I'm ready to go. Great camera work, Spielberg. If you'd actually see what I was doing, the plane was doing a great job shaving down the side of the board. Now that I've spent two hours making a wooden rectangle, I figure I'm ready to move on and start making the legs of this table. I'm taking these angle iron that I found in the trash can and cutting them up as the braces that will attach the legs to the bottom of the table. Marking these out with a sharpie and then cutting them with an angle grinder works just fine. It'd be really nice eventually to have a horizontal bandsaw to be able to do these just all at once and measure them a whole lot more accurately. This works just fine for now though. With the pieces finally cut, I'm going to go and lay them all out on my table so I can see about what they're going to look like. I still have it set up so that way eventually I can use a unistrut runner underneath the table to have shelves that roll out from underneath. Now I'm going and welding my braces together. It feels great to finally be using steel that's thin enough that my welder can actually handle it. I'm using conduit for the table legs because it's pretty tough and light. So I've got it clamped to the side of my workbench, using the level to check that it's actually vertical. Once I have that set, then I can use the level to check that the brace is horizontal, and then I know that they're 90 degrees. After that, we took them outside and spray painted them black. I knew screws probably weren't the best way to attach this. I was thinking construction adhesive might be a decent option instead, but I wasn't sure that I wanted to keep these legs at first, so I wanted to use something removable. In the end, the screws ended up being plenty strong, but I decided to go and attach the two sets of legs together using a threaded rod. Since the tabletop has a bit of a cup to it, the threaded rod is going to reinforce the legs and it's also going to stop them from wanting to splay out. I have a nut that I've placed inside of the conduit on either side, and I can tighten that with a wrench in order to increase or decrease the tension. It was definitely a tight fit trying to get the threaded rod to be exactly the right length and thread the nut onto it inside the conduit like this, but I definitely liked the idea of not being able to see either end of the threaded rod or the nuts. Now I'll just spray paint those threaded rods to match and touch up any other paint on the legs, and then I'll move on to the finish sanding on the top. At this point the board had already been sanded to 120 grits, so there really wasn't too much more to do. I took my plane down the edges to go and give it a little bit of a chamfer, but for the most part I was just removing small scratches from the times it had been flipped over and things like that. I had to sit there for like 30 minutes doing this, but luckily for you there's fast forward and the enjoyment of my llama pajama pants, so hope you enjoy.
Once I finish the sanding, I wipe down the excess dust with a rag. I don't want the dust to get mixed up into the oil when I put the finish on. Danish oil really makes a huge difference in the finish, it adds so much gloss to it. Once I put this coat on fully, I waited for it to dry and then did one more coat after that. And now it's done. Here it is completed. And then I went and moved it into my apartment and put it behind the couch like I in intended. And you can see it here, all in place. It's got decorations on it now. Now the next mini project is going to be a set of floating shelves for my parents. I took these boards that I milled from the tree in their front yard and sanded them up to get an idea of what the finish is going to look like at the end. And then I cut them to length on the miter saw to make sure they were all even. I really like all this vaulting and texture in this wood. It really seems interesting to me and doesn't really look like anything else that I've seen before. These are going to be live edge shelves, but I still need to make the back flat so it sits nicely against the wall. I got this planer and it's been really nice for flattening out the back here, although I'm still having some trouble with ending up with a slow bow over the entire back, so I fixed it with a hand plane. If anybody has any technique tips there, that'd be really helpful. It seems like if I was using the joiner right, I'd actually have it flat right off the thing, so I figure I must be doing something wrong. Luckily I just sharpened my hand flame for the last project, so at least it was still pretty sharp for this. So it really was just a quick couple passes before we had it all flat. With that done I started working on the live edge side. All the spalting and everything was great, but it was very busy on the live edge face. So I went and sanded it to be a little bit more consistent, and then I also just put a little bit more texture into it. I don't think it's very noticeable where I modified it, but I just used the sander to kind of carve in some more curve so that way it looked a little bit more interesting. I quickly sanded the top of my workbench smooth. I'll have to replace the entire top soon, but for now this will be smooth enough that I can sand the rest of my boards without messing up the back surface of them. Having the replaceable top is actually pretty nice. Once I do refinish the top of my workbench, it'll just be unscrewing this piece of plywood and putting a new one on there instead of having to go and plane the whole tabletop down. I'm going to use two of these steel rods at either side of the shelf in order to hold the three shelves apart. I'm sanding them up and then I'm going to go and drill the holes, I'm measuring them out with my calipers, although in the end I don't think that I actually got these perfectly straight, but since I drilled through all three together it didn't really matter. I gave the rods a preliminary paint off camera and now I'm cutting them to length. Once I had all four rods cut I smoothed the edges on the belt sander, and then I moved on to putting masking tape around the holes in the pieces of wood. The reason I did this was so that when I epoxy the rods in, I don't want the excess epoxy getting all over the wood and being difficult to remove. I also am going to need to touch up the paint on these, and that's going to make life a lot easier. Here you can see I'm sliding the rods through the holes and spacing out the shelves. I had to make sure the shelves were in the same order as the way I drilled them, otherwise all four holes wouldn't necessarily align. Once the shelves were close to the right place, I went and mixed up the epoxy. I decided it would be easier to apply it to the rod where the shelf was going to be, and then slide the shelf onto the correct spot on the rod, rather than putting epoxy in the holes and sliding those up and down the rod. I think this worked out a lot better so I didn't just coat the entire rod in epoxy and have to clean that off later. The tops of the rods weren't entirely even once the epoxy had set, so I ground the high ones down. I was worried about either slipping off the top of the rod and scarring up the workpiece, or grinding too much and overheating the epoxy. In hindsight it might have been better to just use a file here and a little bit more patience, but it worked out okay. I added a lot more tape so that way when I spray paint the rods to touch up the paint, I won't have to worry about sanding any paint off the wood. It actually worked out pretty well and I didn't have to do any sanding after the fact. Once the paint had some time to dry, I wiped the entire shelf down with water. I'd seen that this raises up the grain and hopefully lets it sink in a little bit better when I put the finish on, and it seemed like it worked pretty well. Before I spend any more time on the finish of this shelf, I wanted to make sure that the mounting would actually work, so I drove some 4 inch screws into the studs and then made sure they were level and hung the shelf just sitting on top of those with the heads cut off. I wanted to make sure that they would actually hold the weight, 
and then I went and marked one hole and started to drill it out from behind. I didn't trust my own measurements here to get the second hole right, so I put the first screw in the first hole and then pressed the shelf against the second screw to make a mark. That way I could just drill directly on the mark. And that actually worked out pretty well. These holes are oversized by I think 330 seconds anyways, so I had a little bit of room to play with regardless. With the mounting figured out, I've moved on and started putting the finish on. This drank up a lot of finish, so I ended up putting on, I think, three coats at least. And in some areas, I think probably more than that. But I ended up really liking how it turned out. I'm at some point going to probably put some polyurethane on it to give it a little bit more gloss. But you can see here, this is what it looks like finished. Thanks so much for watching, and hopefully the next video will be out quite a bit sooner than this one was.